In this video, we're going to take a look at section 6.7 on applications of radicals. Perhaps a better name for this section would be applications of the Pythagorean theorem, because every example I have in this lecture video, that is what we're going to be applying. I assume it's probably the same way in the homework. So here's our first example. Find the length of side A in the right triangle if B is equal to 6 and C is equal to 10. The triangle is not drawn to scale, so we're not going to base our answer off the way the picture looks. We're going to base our answer off of what the math tells us. And the relationship between these three sides is the Pythagorean theorem. If, I'm not sure if I'm spelling it 100% right. Um, but the Pythagorean theorem says that the lengths of the two shorter sides, if I take the sum of those, of the, let me put it this way, the sum of the square of the lengths of the shorter two sides, it must equal the square of the longest side, which is often called the hypotenuse. So the way I learned this in school was a squared plus b squared equals h squared. I, I didn't learn it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It seems like that's how everybody knows it now. I kind of like calling it h squared to distinguish that one from the other two sides, because if you use c, it just seems like A, B, and C don't really matter. Like, what does A mean? What does B mean? What does C mean? They seem interchangeable because it's just A, B, C. But the last one is not interchangeable. This, the one that's by itself, has to be the longest side, which is called the hypotenuse. The shorter two sides, it doesn't matter which one's which. A and B are interchangeable. It doesn't matter which one you call A, which one you call B. But this one does matter. So... You can think of it that way, a squared plus b squared equals h squared, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared, if you want to think of it that way, which is the way they have it set up in this particular problem. All right, and so we know b is equal to 6, and c is equal to 10, so I don't know why I'm putting 11, and so we want to find a. So we're going to plug in 6 for b, we're going to plug in 10 for c, and then we want to solve for a and to find out what the length of side a would have to be. And so we're going to get a squared plus uh, 6 squared, which is 36, equals 10 squared, which is 100. I almost said 64, but you'll see why I almost said that in just a second. So now we want to solve this for a squared. Now, technically, this is quadratic, but because a is the only, uh, you know, I don't want to say this. a squared is the only term with a in this problem. We can actually just solve this for a. We can get a by itself by subtracting the 36 to the other side of the equation, and we'll get a squared equals 64. So that's why I was thinking 64 a moment ago. I don't know, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing it this way, but I'm just going to go with it. I'm already there. Now, to get a by itself, we want to cancel out this power of 2. And we just talked about in the last video, 6.6, .6, that square roots cancel out powers of 2, just as powers of 2 cancel out square roots. And so if I want to cancel out a power of 2, I just apply a square root to that. If I do that to the left-hand side, I do the same thing to the right-hand side. And so I'm going to get a equals the square root of 64, which is 8. Actually, we don't run into the problem that I was thinking of, because technically it's not just 8. Because we talked about this back in 6.1, the square root of a squared actually isn't just a. It's the absolute value of a. And so we actually get two answers here. We get a equals 8 and a equals negative 8. But the negative one actually can just be ignored because we're talking about a length, and lengths can't be negative. And so actually, we can just take the square root and ignore the negative answer. So we get the answer you probably were expecting anyways, which is a is equal to 8. All right. And so this length would have to be 8. So I'm sorry, I have all these, uh, how do you say, corollary discussions about how, you know, different things that are coming up in the problem. But because a can't be negative, when you get to this point, you can take the square root of both sides and you can just ignore the negative answer here. And you don't have to use absolute value because you only need absolute value if a could be any real number, which it can't in this case. A can only be positive, so we don't need an absolute value on this. So you can kind of bypass that whole um, extra consideration and just 
get the answer that you probably were thinking of to begin with, which is take the square root of both sides, a is just equal to eight. Now, if we were not doing word problems, if we were just solving equations, then there actually are two solutions to this equation, positive eight and negative eight, and that will be important in chapter seven. So in chapter seven, we will not be able to ignore the negative answer. We'll have to find both of them. But for 6.7, you can ignore this extra detail and just keep the positive answer. All right, so all that being said, let's take a look at another problem, which you cannot completely see because it's a little bit off the mark. So let me move it. I don't, this is probably bad. I don't know how it looks when you're watching the video when I move the area that I'm recording in. So hopefully it didn't mess up your computer too much. So guy wire, how long is a guy wire reaching from the top of a 14 foot pole to a point on the ground 10 feet from the pole. So if we draw a picture of that situation, we have a pole, right, so it's this red line here, and then we have the ground, and there is a wire reaching from the top of the pole to a point on the ground that is 10 feet from the pole. Right, so that's 10 feet away where the wire reaches the ground. The pole itself is 14 feet high. And so you see when you draw a picture of the situation, you get a triangle. And you know two sides of the triangle. You're looking for the third side. And so it's Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared. Uh, it's hard for me to decide here after we talked about it. I'm going to go with C squared. But remember, that's the hypotenuse. C has to be the length of the longest side which is actually the side we're looking for. The longest side is the side opposite the 90 degree angle. So if you look at my picture, you might feel like it's hard to tell which side is the longest side. It's always the side opposite the 90 degree angle. So this side is the hypotenuse, which is what C has to equal. So this and this one are interchangeable. One of them is A and one of them is B. It doesn't matter which one's which. So I'm gonna call this one A, I'll call this one B, but this one has to be C. And that's the one that we're looking for. So we're going to plug for A, we're going to plug in 14. We get 14 squared plus for B, we're going to plug in 10. We get 10 squared equals C squared. Right? And so 14 squared is actually 196. I happen to, I know up to 15 squared. That's kind of my limit. There's some people I know that have much more than that memorized. I've met people before that can do like, you know, 48 squared off the top of their head. I don't have it memorized to that. Uh, large of a number. All right, so 196 plus 100, right? 10 squared is 100. And so that's going to give me 296 equals C squared. So now to solve this for C, we'll do what we did in the last example. We'll take the square root of both sides. We, we don't have to do absolute value here. We can ignore the negative result that we should get from this equation. Because of the word problem, our answer can't be negative. So we're just going to get C equals the square root of 296. Now, that probably can be simplified. And you might be tempted to say, oh, just plug it into my calculator and you get a decimal answer from that. And the decimal answer will be somewhere in the neighborhood of like maybe 17 point something something. But and while that seems like a good answer to have here, because if I want to know what the length of this wire is, we might want it in decimal form to have a good idea of what that is. Because if I tell you the length of the wire is square root of 296, you're not going to know how, how much that is, right? If I tell you I ran square root of 296 miles today, we have no idea what that distance is immediately, right? Because that's not a common number we're used to dealing with. So decimal numbers would be kind of nice for measuring that length, but the directions here don't want that. They say type an exact answer. Decimal answers are not exact answers. Using radicals as needed. So keep it in radical form. So what we have to do with this is what we learned to do earlier in the chapter. We have to split this up into a good pile and a bad pile. And we want to get the largest number possible here into the good pile. So what jumps out to me first is the number four. I'm pretty sure four is going to work because four divides into anything that's divisible by 100. So four divides into 100, four divides into 200, four divides into 300. While this isn't 300, it's four less than 300. So four divides into 300, four will divide into 296. It will divide into 304. So if you're just four off from that number, four divides into that as well. But before I commit to four as what's going to go in the good pile here, I want to see what the result is for the other number to see if something else could be split out from that 
to be put into the good pile. That way I can just put it all into the good pile at once. So 296, let's just write it up here. I tried to write it up here. Let's try it again. 296 can be split up into four times. Let's see, four goes into 29, seven times. There's a one left over from that. And then so we'll have 16, four goes into 16 four times. So it'll be four times 74. Now, can I split another four from this? I don't think that's gonna work. So four does not divide into 74. Does nine work? Can I split this up as nine times something? Because then nine would go into the good pile with four, right? But nine doesn't work either, right? Nine doesn't divide into 74. The next number that we'd be interested in is 16, right? I'm thinking of numbers that I can take the square root of, right? 16 doesn't divide into 74. Uh, 25 almost works, but 25 would work if it was 75, but not 74. I don't think 36 works, right? 36 would go into thir uh, 72. Um, and then 49, we're already kind of too big. So since none of these numbers can be split out from the 74, the 74 is not going to simplify. So it turns out that indeed four is the biggest number that I can put into the good pile and I'll have 74 left over, which isn't going to simplify, right? We tried to do that up here and we couldn't find any numbers that are factors of 74 that we could take the square root of. And so this will be the best we can do. Apply the square root to each pile individually. The square root of four gives me two, and then the square root of 74 copies down. And that is the answer that they want. Again, it's not a very friendly answer. It's not a very uh, familiar answer, right? Because again, how far is two square root of 74? I don't know off the top of my head, right? That's an unusual number that I'm not sure of the magnitude of it. Uh, but that's the way they want the answer for Math Excel. All right, let's take a look at another example. A stereo receiver is in a corner of a 19 foot by 8 foot room. Speaker wire will run under a rug diagonally to a speaker in the far corner. If three feet of slack is required on each end, how long a piece of wire should be purchased? All right, so I'm going to draw a picture of the room we're working with here. All right, so it's going to be a rectangle, um, 19 foot long by 8 foot wide. And we have a stereo receiver in one corner, right? So let's say that's over here. And we have a speaker in the far corner on the opposite side. And we want to run a wire from the receiver to that speaker. And so I'm going to draw, it should be a straight line. I'm not going to be able to draw very straight on this pad. And so imagine that's a straight line here. Um, that's the wire that we need to buy to connect it to the receiver, connect the speaker to the receiver. And so the shape that emerges from this situation is again a triangle where we know two of the sides and we're looking for the length of the third side of that triangle, which again happens to be the hypotenuse because it's opposite of the 90 degree angle, right? The 90 degree angle is right here. So the opposite side is the hypotenuse, which is the longest side of the triangle. And so that's going to be my value C, right? That's going to be the variable C there. So this one's going to be A and this one's going to be B or vice versa. A and B don't really matter which one's which. So I'll call that one A, I'll call that one B. And we're going to plug this into the Pythagorean theorem again. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So for A, I'm going to plug in 19 squared. For B, I'm going to plug in 8 squared. And then I'm going to solve for C to find out what the length of the wire has to be. Now this time the directions say round to the nearest foot. So they actually do want a decimal answer this time, right? They want us to round to the nearest whole number. Um, so we won't leave it in radical form. We're going to plug this into our calculator, which I need to make sure I have ready for, for, for us to do. All right. So I think I have it. Okay. So 19 squared. I need a calculator for that also because I'm not sure what that is. I know 20 squared is 400. So 19 squared is going to be a little bit less than that, like three something. Um, and it's really not coming to me. It might be like 341, something like that. So let me... Let me just do my calculator here. 19 times 19, 361. All right, so I was just a little bit off there. So 361 plus 8 squared is 64. So we're going to add those two numbers together. So 361 is already in my calculator. I'll add 64 to that number, and I get 425. Whoops, jumping ahead of myself here. Undo that. Equals C squared. And now to solve that for C, I will take the square root of both sides. And this time I'm going to plug that into my calculator. 
because I don't want to keep this as a radical. And so we'll take the square root of that number and I get 20.6155 and it goes on from there. The direction, so this would be not the exact answer, but this would be our more precise decimal answer. But the directions say round to the nearest foot. Because I have a six here, I'm gonna round this up to 21 feet. Now, if you type 21 feet into the box here, that actually is still not the correct answer, right? Because we're told that we need three feet of slack on each end. So I need to have an extra three feet to plug into the device in the one corner and an extra three feet of wire to plug into the speaker over here in addition to the length of the diagonal of the room, right? So the room itself, this value for C is 21, but how much wire I should buy is an extra three feet on either end, which means I need another six feet on top of that. So I'm gonna add six to the length of the, of the diagonal of the room to get 27 feet. Let me try that again, 27 feet. And so that's how long the wire should be to reach all the way across the room diagonally and to give us that extra three feet of slack on either end of the of the room for being able to maneuver to plug it in or whatever. So 27 is what you wanna type in here. So that's how that extra three feet comes into the problem. So you might've thought as I was setting up the problem, wait, where do we put the three at? You actually don't use that until the end of the problem. So once you get your answer, then you're gonna add that three feet on for both sides of the wire. All right. Let's take a look at the last problem. And again, I'm sorry, I'm off the mark here. Let's see if I can move it one more time. Okay. Now the picture gets cut off a little bit, but you see what you need to see for the picture. So plumbers use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate pipe length. If a pipe is to be offset as shown in this figure, so this is what offset looks like, the travel or length of the pipe is calculated using the lengths of the advance and the offset. Find the travel if the offset is 16.75, right? So that's this number here. Let's try that again, 16.75. And the advance is 12.25 inches, right? But the units don't really matter. They're not gonna trick us with the units or anything. Now, it'd be tricky if they give, this, if they give us this in inches, but then one of the answer in feet, for example, then we have to be more careful about it. But, but everything's in inches, the answer is in inches. So the units are kind of immaterial at that point. All right, so we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared again, right? Every problem on this homework so far has been Pythagorean theorem. Um, the hypotenuse again is the opposite side of the 90 degree angle. So here's the 90 degree angle here, which means the travel is the hypotenuse which means that is my value for C, not my value for, why do I keep saying it that way? But this length is represented by the letter C. Let's put it that way. Which means these two are my A and my B, and it doesn't matter which one's which for that. And so I'll just call that one A and call that one B. All right, so A is gonna be 12.25 squared. B is going to be 16.75 squared. And just like the last two problems, we plugged in numbers for A and B, and we're gonna solve for C to find out the value of the hypotenuse, because that's the, the answer we're looking for. So again, I'll, I'll need a calculator for this, because these numbers are gonna get kind of crazy. All right, so we have 12.25 squared, which is gonna be, and keep all the decimals. Now I know the answer, we went around to the nearest thousandth, but you don't want to round your calculations to the nearest thousandth, that's just the answer. So as you're doing your calculations, you keep everything, keep all the decimal places, right? So we have 150.0625 as the result from that being squared. Plus we'll do the same thing with 16.75. We are going to square that and we get 280.5625 equals C squared. Again, not rounding anything off. That's the exact answer down to the, the last decimal place that I'm getting from my calculator. Now I wanna add these two together. So I'm gonna add, I already have the 280 in my calculator. So I'll add to that the 150.0625 and I'm gonna get 430.625 equals C squared. And then 
to solve for C, I'm going to take the square root of that number. And I'll get that C is equal to 20.751505, and it keeps going beyond that, but that's as much as I'm going to write down. That's my final answer. This is what I'll round to the nearest thousandth, which is three decimal places. This is the tens, hundreds, that's thousands right there. And I look to the number just to the right of that to help me decide, do I keep it a one or do I bump it up to a two? Since that's a five, we actually bump it up. And so my final answer will be 20.752 when I round it to the nearest thousandth. Right. And so let me, I don't know, that five's bugging me. Let me write it again. Whoops, I hit the wrong arrow. I have to do that at least once a video, don't I? If you've been watching all of my videos, uh, seems like I do that at least once every time. So I apologize for that. Let's just erase it and then we'll rewrite it. So 20.752. And that's what we would type into the box there. This time we don't have to add extra because we're not adding an extra length of pipe on either end like we did in the last problem. So just the, the hypotenuse is the length that we want for the pipe. And so that would be the final answer. All right, so it's a short video, it's a short section. There's not a whole lot of problems in this section. So that is the end of the video for section 6.7 on applications of radicals or applications of the Pythagorean theorem.